As we know, China is the world's largest auto market. But in recent years, as they've been expanding to Europe and Southeast Asia, they're coming up against a major challenge. And that is not having enough capacity in their factories in a place like China. So where are they going to build their factories next? Thailand. Thailand is the key to the Chinese car company's growth over the next few years. Let's find out why. So one of the main reasons that Thailand has become so attractive to these Chinese companies is that they have experience in manufacturing already. There's a number of factories there from legacy automakers. So there's this whole chain of suppliers who are already there. Plus it's a well-trodden path. Chinese automakers don't want to go into a new market, start setting up factories and find out there's problems. So that's why Thailand is becoming so attractive. So obviously in some of these companies, they're at capacity in China. BYD, for example, is already building one, two, three more plants across China. But that's because they're selling in about 60 or 70 different countries right now. And so to have a global base, they need to make a base outside of China. So currently there's three companies that I know of who are thinking about expanding with a factory in Thailand. Obviously the first one is BYD who have broken ground just a few weeks ago. One of the others is Netta, Hoson, the Netta brand. One of the newcomers, only been around for a few years, sell some of the worst looking cars, but also some really good looking cars as well of, of recent, as we saw, saw at the Shanghai Auto Show. And another one is Great Wall Motors. Again, they're expanding rapidly across the world and they want to have their base in Thailand. But why is this? What other reasons could there be for expanding in Thailand? Let's find out. So first of all, it has to be the geographic advantage of having these factories in Thailand. So why are they basing it in Thailand, not Vietnam or other places like that? Well, Thailand, again, it has that reputation. Plus it's got all the shipping routes. Everything's already been set up and it becomes a really important market for shipping all around Asia, as well as Australia and New Zealand. Again, Thailand is a right-hand drive market and there are some significant right-hand drive markets nearby and further away which really need to be addressed if they're going to start importing these Chinese cars in right-hand drive. So for example, Australia, New Zealand, Thailand, Japan, Singapore are all right-hand drive markets as well as the UK. These are significant markets that if they want to expand globally, they have to start building right-hand drive cars. Thailand is the natural first place to go for these brands. Places like Japan, Singapore, just too expensive. So over the last few years, Japanese automakers have really dominated the Thai factory market. They've had most of their plants there, as well as GM, for example. But because Japanese automakers have been very slow to transition to EVs, and this is what the market demands in Thailand, a lot of these automakers just can't keep up with the demand. So the Chinese are shipping in BYDs, Aura Cats to the masses, as well as the Netta as well. These are relatively affordable cars for a country which maybe has slightly less disposable income. And so they're really filling that gap where the Japanese automakers just can't compete. The other thing is the Thai government wants to have 30% of its cars EVs by 2030. The only way they can do that is by attracting these Chinese companies to set up factories in their country. Interestingly, GM actually pulled out of the market. They stopped producing cars in Thailand just a few years ago. And to fill that vacuum, GWM has stepped in and taken over that factory. And they're gonna produce their EVs and also their ICE vehicles in the old GM factory in Thailand. When you've already got a factory space, workers who know how to build cars, then it's a much easier transition for these companies. If they want to expand quickly and rapidly, this is the kind of steps that these companies need to take. So General Motors actually pulled out of Thailand in 2020 because it was becoming more and more unprofitable for them to be in the Thai market building cars there. As you see, GM are restructuring, they always seem to be restructuring and they're scaling down their operations. They say to focus on EVs, but that's really yet to be seen. Now, of course, they have some EVs in the US and they have some EVs in China through their joint ventures, but they're not really doing it in a big way. This factory in Thailand would have seemed like a sensible thing to keep, but they've decided to get rid of it in 2020 and GWM 
Great Wall Motors have taken over. Of course, with the closing of a factory, that's the loss of a thousand jobs. But these are jobs which I'm sure Great Wall Motors will likely be able to rehire if their sales are a success in these right-hand drive or Asian markets. Another company we haven't actually mentioned yet is iWays. Really interesting because just a few weeks or a few months ago, iWays received a $40 million investment from an e-mobility partner uh, called Phoenix Group who are in Thailand and they have plans to build tens of thousands of cars per year, perhaps a ride sharing. There weren't that many details given. We'll wait and see to see if that actually happens. Of course, iWays have had a bit of a bumpy start and they really are only selling in Europe. They do sell some in China, but they're not particularly popular. If they'll sell in Thailand, perhaps they will. Perhaps it'll be the, this will be the start of their growth in the country and in the region. But the most interesting thing about Thailand is that CATL are also planning a factory in Thailand. Now, CATL have factories again around the world. The majority of them are in China, but to have one in Thailand suggests that this Thai factory market is going to be significant for them to actually build a mega battery factory. Going to have something of a capacity of around 12 gigawatt hours per year, and that is a big number. So they're not just building it for one factory, but many factories. This facility will cover 80,000 square meters, and it's not actually just producing for Thailand, but it's producing batteries on a global scale. So these will be shipped to other places which perhaps build EVs, maybe somewhere like India. A big reason for building in Thailand, again, is because they're trying to build cars for a growing middle class. Now, as Thailand and Vietnam get richer and richer, this middle class is growing even bigger, much like what happened in China a few years ago. And so the Chinese want to tap into this market with their premium EVs. All of the companies we've spoken about, uh, GWM, BYD, uh, have premium products for a more premium um, customer, and they want to sell these ones more because they make more profit off them. So this is why the Chinese are so attracted by Thailand, and Thailand is one of the more advanced economies in the area, which has grown the fastest. According to Bloomberg NEF, the EV market is set to grow 13 times from 2020 to 2030. That's massive growth. And of course, the Chinese automakers want to be one of the first to tap into this. Of course, the legacy automakers do have EVs, but they're the very top end of the market. They're very expensive. And the Chinese are filling in that cheaper category of EVs that people can afford and can buy. And they also have cars in their range that people can aspire to in five, 10 years. This is why this market is so important to them. Another thing is that the price of batteries is expected to decrease over the next few years. In fact, making these EVs even cheaper. So if you have an EV which is built in Thailand with batteries from Thailand, that price should shrink even more and be even more affordable for more people. And that's what they want to do. They want to saturate the market with these EVs, with these products from their own brands. Whilst the adoption of EVs in Southeast Asia is still in its very, very early days, BYD, for example, have only been there about a year, they are expecting to have amazing momentum over the coming months and coming years as more and more people switch on to EVs. However, it's not just all production and export. They're actually starting to build research and development centers within the country. This shows just how significant Thailand is going to be to these Chinese automakers. One example again is Great Wall Motors, who have set up a research and development studio in Thailand. As they expand in the region, they want to have detailed knowledge about the market that they're expanding into, which can't always be done from China. So this shows a significant step in that direction for Great Wall. Overall, the future looks bright for Chinese automakers in Thailand. With strong manufacturing capabilities, a growing middle class and increased technology and development, Thailand really is going to become the center of Asia for these EVs in the future. Thank you for watching this video about Thailand and why we think Thailand will be so significant in the future. Please let me know if you like this video. If you don't like the video, just leave the comments below. I'm hoping to do a few more of these this week. This is all about me learning more about the market 
and I'm just basically telling you some of the research that I've done uh, in order to make other videos uh, on this channel and other channels. So it's all about research and finding out all about the market and what's going on. So thank you for watching and see you again next time.